Hello everyone, welcome back to AJ Akshara Academy Physics Classes, where physics made simple to everyone. This is video lecture number 1 from chapter Dual Nature of Radiation Matter. In this class, we are going to discuss about photoelectric effect. Me andar ki na request hai mante, e video nu poorthi ga chivar varku chudandi. Ala chedam valla, meeru concept nu poorthi ga understand ches kodam kaaka, Physics law on the 20, photoelectric effects on the 20, problems on the easy ga salu chegalaru. Munduga, ma channel on the ma subscriber to the Nevadalu. E video on the mother sarega choose to Navaru. Ma channel on the Tapaga, subscribe chegalu. Mari photoelectric effect ante emo chudama. So Munduga, photoelectric effect ante anti. When light of suitable frequency is incident on a metal surface then electrons are ejected from the surface of the metal this phenomena is called as photoelectric effect and the emitted electrons are called photoelectrons and current in the circuit is called as photoelectric current. And the metal surface pina suitable frequency unna twenty light nu fall a laga man chaste than surface nundi electrons and eighty eject out. Alla electrons nu eject chase at twenty phenomena ne manam photoelectric effect and term. And the kakunda. Photoelectric effect is general phenomena exhibited by all substances but is mostly observed with metals. And the emikadamunaku photoelectric effect anedi anni substances su exhibit chestai. Kani photoelectric effect is most easily observed with metals. Metals dwara manam jinni chakaga observe chegaltam. Certain alkali metals like sodium, potassium, calcium show photoelectric effect when visible light falls on them. Alkali metals in at one tea, sodium, potassium, calcium, one tea substances pina, visible light fall in a pudu kuda manam e photoelectric effect nu observe chevach. And the Kakunda metals like zinc, cadmium, magnesium show photoelectric effect to ultraviolet light. Zinc gani, cadmium gani, magnesium, vitipina, ultraviolet light and the fall in Napudu, we can able to observe photoelectric effect. Now, first we are going to discuss about the facts in experimental study of photoelectric effect or it is also known as Lennart's experimental study of photoelectric effect. So, we are going to discuss the observations made by Lennard to study the photoelectric effect. In this one, the first observation is effect of intensity of light on photoelectric effect. So, from the graph, from the graph, a graph is drawn between photoelectric current and intensity. From this graph, it is clear that photoelectric current is directly proportional to intensity of incident radiation. See the graph clearly. So, Whenever we are increasing the intensity from 0 towards x axis, then current also increases linearly with increase in the photoelectric current. That means there is a linear relation between photoelectric current and intensity of incident radiation. And second observation is effect of anode potential on photoelectric current. Again here also a graph is drawn between anode potential taking on x axis and photoelectric current on y axis. From the graph what we can able to observe. Initially 
with increase in anode potential photoelectric current also increases till a stage comes where photoelectric current becomes maximum this maximum photoelectric current is called saturation current ante first manamu anode potential increase chestu unnapudu photoelectric current kuda increase avuthu vastundi entha varaku increase avutundante photoelectric current anedi maximum ayye varaku aa maximum current ni em antunnam ikkada ante manam saturation current antunnam and after this once it reaches the saturation current whatever be the increase in anode potential there is no increase in photoelectric current now when anode is given a negative potential with respect to the cathode here in negative x axis which we are calling it as retarding potential the negative potential given to anode is called as the retarding potential then what we can observe from the graph so here photo current gradually goes on decreasing and finally it becomes zero at a particular negative potential of anode this negative potential of anode where photoelectric current becomes zero is known as the stopping potential stopping potential so whenever you are increasing the retarding potential values then photoelectric current gradually decreases and becomes zero at a particular negative potential of anode which is called as the stopping potential third observation in lenard experiment is effect of frequency of incident radiation on stopping potential here we have two graphs so first let us go for graph 1 in this graph collector plate potential is taken on x axis and photoelectric current on taken on y axis and for different frequencies say nu3 nu2 nu1 where nu3 is greater than nu2 is greater than nu1 so we are getting different values of stopping potential such as minus v01 minus v02 and minus v03 so as the frequency is higher we are getting higher stopping potential so from this graph what we can able to observe so stopping potentials are different for different frequencies of incident light and stopping potential is more for higher frequency but for all the frequencies we are getting only one straight line which is called as the saturation current so saturation current is same for different frequencies so from this what we can able to say the saturation current depends only on intensity of incident radiation and is independent of frequency of radiation so going for second graph we can able to observe the photoelectric effect above a minimum frequency of incident radiation so the minimum frequency of incident radiation u not so which is just sufficient to eject the photo electrons from the surface of a metal is called as threshold frequency ante nu not kante takkuva frequency unnatuvanti light ganaka metal surface paina incident avute manake em avutundi there is no photoelectric effect we cannot able to observe photoelectric effect why because ejection of photo electrons cannot takes place whenever frequency of incident radiation is below 
new knot that's why new knot is called as the threshold frequency and now from the lenard experiment so we can have four laws of photoelectric emission the first law of photoelectric emission is the photoelectric emission is an instantaneous process or phenomena that means the time interval between the incident of radiation and emission of photoelectrons is less than 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds ante ikkada em avutundi meeku light fall avagane dan nunchi em avutunnai electrons anetivi eject avutunnai ante there is no time lag between incident of photon and emission of photoelectrons that's why it is known as instantaneous process or instantaneous phenomena and what is the second one for a given metal and frequency of incident radiation the photoelectric current is directly proportional to the intensity of incident radiation whenever frequency of radiation is kept constant and we have same metal then we are changing the intensity of incident radiation what happens here along with intensity of incident radiation photoelectric current also increases showing the direct relation between photoelectric current and intensity of incident radiation third law is for a given metal there exists a certain minimum frequency of incident radiation below which no emission of photoelectrons takes place this minimum frequency is called as threshold frequency so whenever the frequency of incident radiation is below a certain minimum frequency then electrons are not ejected from the surface of the metal that minimum frequency below which uh, emission of photoelectrons does not takes place is called as threshold frequency and finally above the threshold frequency the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons is independent of intensity of incident radiation but depends only on frequency of incident radiation 